Happy Tuesday, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday night week two of season one, division two. We have for you this evening the 1-0 Reborn Red Knights and the 1-0 Krond 6. Game one will be here on Tomb of the Spider Queen the week after Stukov's release. And uh, both teams, of course, like I said, 1-0, looking to starting to establish themselves at the top of Division 2 and get ready for the playoffs at the end of our eight-week season. Tomb of the Spider Queen was selected by Red Knights, led by fellow caster and highlight reel creator extraordinaire Jay Zahn. And we are getting ready to go straight into the draft. No time to waste. And here we are. Tomb of the Spider Queen traditionally is a 1-4 split. You're going to have your solo laner at the uh, at the bottom you have a four man rotating between mid and top it is a three lane map but it's also one of the smaller maps in the pool and possibly more than any other battlefield in heroes of the storm a wave clear is highly highly prioritized and this map can be a little bit snowbally if the first team to get turn in is able to uh, build on that to roll turn in after turn in, um, and especially as the team with the team that's that's down, you can end up holding on to a whole lot of gems, and uh, it can make you play a little bit tentatively uh, because you don't want to get into a team fight and lose all those gems. There was a, uh, a great HGC game a couple weeks ago where uh, GFE had something like 200 gems before they got their first turn in. Uh, it was a really fascinating game to watch and really shows uh, how valuable patience can be in these games. You're not out of it till you're out of it. Heroes in the Storm in particular, of any of the MOBAs, has uh, some of the more dramatic comeback mechanics uh, available to the losing team, so you just really got to be patient. First ban, Uther. For Kron 6, and it looks like Reborn Knights Red are considering banning the Malthiel despite his round of nerfs. I think he's gotten two of them since his release. He's still very powerful, and there is the Malthiel ban. Welcome, 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 those of you in the chat room. <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised to see a Genji, uh, still very powerful. Uh, going the other side, we could see a Stukov, a Nubarak, still highly prioritized. Greymane, always very, very good. Uh, reworked Zul, you've seen him everywhere, uh, currently toward the top of win rates and hot slogs. But they go with the tried and true dynamic duo of Gul'dan and Ariel. Uh, those two go together so well. Both manaless heroes. Gul'dan powers up Ariel. Ariel powers up Gul'dan. And it really puts a lot of pressure onto the opposition. They're really good as part of that four-man rotation. It is going to be very important here for Kron 6 to make sure they have enough wave clear to respond to this very solid combination of Gul'dan and Ariel. Uh, despite a noob's nerf, he is still on the board, and there he is. So a noob selected. Uh, Stukov, this would be a map Stukov is on because you're staying in group so much, and he really, really uh, excels in, in group settings so he can spread his virus around. And will Gul'dan having a damage over time and Stukov having a heal over time. Uh, that would have been a nice pick, I think, if... Kron 6 had a Stukov player, but they opt to go with a Nubarank Vala. So not really tip, tipping their hand, Kron 6 have a very well-rounded, solid composition. And Tassadar looks like he'll be the ban for Reborn Red Knights, or will it be Rhaegar? Both, I think, good. Tassadar does pair with Vala, but maybe they're thinking with an Ariel on the other side, Kron 6 will ban out the Tassadar. Rhaegar is very good wave clear. 
uh, for a support. So that would have been a solid pick, definitely, for Kron 6. I think probably Rhaegar in the meta right now is, I would say, the most steady eddy of the healers. He really fits into anything. Ancestral heal is really good. The totem is solid. He can uh, merc with a double lightning bond. He's probably my favorite support to play right now. You're seeing uh, Uther and Ariel and, and Stukov sometimes more highly prioritized, but I really like where Rhaegar is right now and what he brings to the table just as a really solid, steady support hero. Kron 6 really thinking about their second ban. Burning all the way into the clock, and they do take out the gray main. Those of you in the chat, if there's anything wrong with the volume settings, uh, please let me know so I can make the adjustments. We're still knocking off a little bit of the rust with the technical stuff as we come back from a fairly long hiatus from last season of Chair League to this season. Two picks coming for Reborn Knights Red. You're going to see a frontliner and maybe a second frontliner. I always like to leave my last pick as kind of a flex pick. I don't like to be pigeonholed into having to pick a support or a tank. So if I'm Reborn Knights Red, I'm looking for my main tank right here, and I'm looking for my solo laner, and that leaves that last pick as kind of a flex pick where you can react to what the other team throws at you, and you're not uh, left with your hands tied behind your back because you have to pick a support or you have to pick a tank. So I would expect to see their main tank, Johanna, very good on Tomb because of her wave clear. And there's there's why Tassadar wasn't banned, because they wanted him for themselves. And ETC, you don't see much of... <laughs> they're just so hot right now. Uh, you don't see much of ETC these days. He's starting to make some cameos back into the HGC. Uh, but since his recent nerfs that knocked him off of the top tank spot, it's really tough for him to hold a front line. He can get poked down pretty um, consistently, and, and that's where I think the Tassadar pairing with the ETC will help him the shield to to eat up some of the poke and keep his life higher, I think is a good pairing. I do expect to see a second tank out of Reborn Knight's Red, though I don't think you're going to solo tank ETC much anymore. Muradin coming out here for Kron 6, and I think Muradin is kind of like Rhaegar is uh, for tanks. He is always good, fits into pretty much anything, tough to kill, has a stun, has a slow has some mobility, and although he's bounced around the meta, he's never left it. He's been at the top, he's been at the bottom. So a lot of stuns for Kron 6 with Anubarak and Muradin, and Vala if they choose to go Reign of Vengeance, rounding out the composition with uh, Brightwing. You've also seen a lot more of her since the buff um, she got recently. It's just a personal preference. She's not one of my favorites, uh, but she can be very effective. And as part of the four-man here, uh, those constant healing pulses will definitely keep Kron 6 topped off. I'm curious who Kron is going to send into the solo lane. Um, Genji or a noob, I'd guess. They don't really have what you would consider somebody to be a typical solo laner. Neither do Reborn right, uh, Knights, although Tassadar can certainly do it. Um, I want to see them pick up a second frontliner here, a tank or a melee assassin at worst, but they really need something in the front to help ETC out. And it's Thrall. So Thrall will be the solo laner. Gul'dan and Ariel and Tassadar will provide the wave clear. ETC will provide the lockdown. I'm not... I just haven't seen much of ETC in Share League lately, so I'm, I'm curious to see how he does. He was one of my favorites for a long time. I wrote ETC in Share League for a really long time, so I was really bummed to see him get um, knocked down. I think I do like uh, Kron 6's draft here just a little bit more. I think their front line is stronger. I think Muradin and Anubarak are going to have an easier time controlling the battle than ETC and Thrall will.
However, I don't know if Brightwing will be able to deal with a late game Gul'dan who puts out so, so much damage. I don't think dra either draft is bad. Both teams have good things going for them. So ultimately, when you have well-balanced teams like this, it really does come down to the execution, which team executes their comp better. And once again, I realized I forgot to download the better observer interface. So I will have that for next week. However, the blue team, Reborn Knights Red, Jason on Ariel, Simply Kill on Gul'dan, Agent G on my boy, rocking out on ETC, Dendi Smasher on Tassadar, and Phantom Puppy on Thrall. The red team, Kron 6, Lukit is on Brightwing, Ding is on Vala, Lazy French is on Genji, T Wong or Twong, don't know which one it is, on Anubarak, and Koza on Muradin. I think one of the things to watch in these battles as they go is how these front lines stack up against each other. The front line for Kron 6, I think, is stronger than the front line for Reborn Nice Red. And as I say that, T Wong almost goes down. However, Lazy French goes after Phantom Puppy on Crawl, a very nicely timed shield from Tassadar. And this is a full on brouhaha mid lane, 5 on 5, lots of low health, but nobody dying. So Anubarak answers my question. He will take the bottom lane and he will square off there against Thrall. So we don't pop down to the bottom lane too much. Usually we're going to watch the four man, but let's give the solo laner some love. Anubarak on Thwong, diving in on Thrall. Lazy French body blocks him. I, I'm sorry, Koza body blocks. And Lazy French dashing in to finish off the first blood of the game. Good, strong rotation by red team there. Able to pick off Thrall and seizing a little bit of early game momentum. Gul'dan eats a stun from Muradin, and now both teams settling into the four-man. And here comes the offense. You can see uh, Kron 6 here is being very aggressive. And taking the... I, I'm, I'm going to say they're going to take this early game the way this is playing. I, I like the gulden Ariel combo. I think is stronger in the wave clear and the four-man rotation. However... They haven't quite been able to get their feet back under them. Ding on Vala isolated a little bit. He will not go down, though. And both teams, once again, really going after each other. And the health bars are melting. They are saying, forget about these minions. Forget about this experience. And let's get ready to rumble, boys, because a lot of damage going out as these teams just throw cooldown after cooldown on each other. Vala eats almost a full Echo of Corruption there, and you can see her uh, her life for it. Brightwing doing a better job of keeping his team up than I thought he would. Both teams have about the same amount of gems, but now this is what I was referring to. Now you can see the Reborn Knights have got their feet under them, their rotation is going, and they are clearing faster than Kron 6 and moving on to the next wave. Kron 6 is having to keep up with their opponents rather than the other way around. And this is what a Gul'dan Ario will do for you. Kron 6 is going to have to get a pick or do something aggressive to push the Reborn Knights out of this very strong four-man that they have here. They actually had to cut out the rotation, leaving Vala top to not miss any soap. So maybe Kron 6 has decided that they can't rotate with the Gul'dan Ario. And they've just decided to leave someone top, or at least they did in that rotation. 22 gems will come off of ETC and five more off of Ariel. <clears throat> Both teams do... I, I lied. Only the Reborn Knights have enough for turn-in. While Kron 6 is getting closer, and now they have enough. So let's see who gets first turn-in. The experience is very, very close. The uh, wall damage, though, definitely in favor definitely in favor of the Reborn Knights. After this little uh, sparring match breaks up here, we're going to go take a quick look in at the bottom lane. And it looks like Thrall is 
probably getting the better of this as he should. Uh, Anubarak's pretty durable, and he's not going to die or anything, but I think Thrall slowly going to push Anubarak back in this. And Blue is able to sneak in the turn in. Blue Webweavers, the first to come out. Anubarak diving in the back line. However, he went a little too deep and was did not have an escape available to him. And the minions landing the felling blow onto Genji. T. Wong. <laughs> okay, got it. All right, thank you. So, very smart, astute shot calling here from the Reborn Knights, prioritizing the top lane, which is, of course, the bot lane. One of the criticisms or observations about Tomb of the Spider Queen that you're going to hear from players is that wind conditions are a little bit hard to come by, so one of the most common wind conditions is that boss lane. So really prioritizing that boss lane is a smart decision by Blue. A strong rotation to drive them off from Kron 6, though. Reborn Knights able to take that first turn in and turn it into about a level lead, a power slide in from ETC. Murden standing strong, having to go tap. Once again, both teams really laying into each other. This time, however, it is the Reborn Knights that definitely got the better of that engagement. There's talents if you can see them. This game has been pretty back and forth. So I will go over them if I get a chance to, but these guys have really been going after each other. It's been hard to take a look at the talents. This is actually a good chance here. Ariel looks like is specking into her whip Gul'dan going with an Echo of Corruption build. Of course, auto attack build out of Tassadar. Auto attack build also out of Vala, it looks like. And Muradin going full Q build. No third win. No second crash on his W. He is going full damage into Stormbolt. It's not something you see very much. So what we're going to see Blue Team do here is they are going to goaltend as best they can and try to keep them out of the turn in. However, Bottom was able to turn in. I don't know how much value that Khan is going to get out of this, though. They're one level down without the heroic, so they have to be very careful when pushing in. Yeah, Nubarak is going the kind of traditional build that you're seeing out of him. So there's the talents for you. I'll flash those up again in a few minutes so we can see what they're doing. We have Archon from Tassadar, Mosh Pit from ETC, Sundering from Thrall, Horrify from Gul'dan, and Crystal Ages out of Ariel. Anytime you have Task Building is going auto attack build, anytime you see a Mosh Pit and a Sundering, those two definitely can have anti synergy. So you really want to make sure those two players are on the same page because you can ruin a mosh pit with the Sundering uh, pretty easily. So not a whole lot of value coming out of these red web weavers because Kron 6 was forced to uh, play more passively without their heroics. Uh, they have, however, just picked them up. And we have Haymaker from Muradin. Haymaker, Playmaker, X-Strike from Genji. And there's the Bush Party Muradin. That's not who you want to take that target. So good job of Muradin to face check that. Horrify goes out. Sundering goes out. Archon has been popped. Nothing happened, though. Still only the uh, four kills for the game. These Both of these teams have been pretty good about not staying to the point of death and retreating when they know the battle is lost. So Reign of Vengeance on Vala. Uh, I think that's uh, Emerald Wind on Brightwing. Let's check real quick. No, Blink Heal on Brightwing. I stand corrected. And Cocoon on the Anubarak. It looks like... The second turn in will be secured for the Reborn Red Knights. <clears throat> yeah, the build on Muradin here is just not something you see in organized play very much. Uh, Haymaker 2 is just not something you see very much. So I'm curious to see how that turns out. He's not a solo tank, so he can, um, in theory, you know, kind of theory crafting on paper, go more of a bruiser. 
role uh, within a move rank on the team. I'm just curious to see how it plays out. Uh, Muradin is just so well known for how hard he is to kill, for how tanky he is. However, without tanking some of those talents, he loses a lot of that. A double stun coming out of Muradin there due to the piercing of the Q. So the bottom blue web weavers are pushing all the way on to keep wall right now. Good patience by Reborn Knights Red. I wonder if you see them posture at boss if Red Team rotates far enough down. If they go qu quickly, they could get in position. No, Red Team is not far enough away for them to do that. They wisely didn't send everyone bottom. Tron 6 does have enough gems for a turn in, however, they are a talent tier down, so they need to patiently soak out, collect enough gems, which they already have, but more importantly, get to talent level, hero level 13, the next talent tier here. Early lead, definitely, well, mid game lead now, definitely in favor of Redborn, Red, Reborn Red Knights. I'm gonna keep killing that name. Reborn Red Knights. They have the talent tier lead, they have a structural lead with two forts down, and they have not lost any of their own. And that right there is just Muradin building up the, the damage on his Q. He is a little far out and kind of isolated. It looks like uh, Crown Six, a little indecisive. They're wisely not hard engaging, and Genji going to try to drop off 18 gems here. Kassadar sniffs it out, does a nice job of goaltending. And now the Knight striving away Kron 6, not letting him get the turn in. However, level 13 talents are here. And now Red is looking to take an engagement, possibly. Anubarak's still all the way in the top lane, so they're probably not going to take a 5-on-5 five five without him. However, if you watch that mini wap and you see him making his way down here, you know it's coming. Muradin and Genji diving in. Horrify isolates out the Genji. He is very deep. Force to use his deflect, and then X strikes right on top of Gul'dan, who is immediately Crystal Aegis, and it's Genji and Brightwing who go down. Excellent job by Jason to put the Crystal Agents, uh, Aegis on his teammate, and that really was the turning point for that because it looked like they had isolated out the Gul'dan, however, it was not to be. And then a one-man dance party secured the Anubarak there. So this should be a free turn-in for the Knights, and you have to wonder if they're going to try to turn in and boss, no, probably not enough time for that. Anubrak is up in three seconds. So they're satisfied to take their turn in and push out all of the lanes. Maybe, once again, they're prioritizing the boss lane. I really like that decision. I don't think this is something enough teams do. Um, however, Knights now caught out and isolated. The dive comes out from the Anubrak. Cocoon goes out, Gul'dan goes down. Whoever is in that cocoon, it is Jason on Ariel. She is almost certainly not going to be one for this world long. That was a really, really nice flank coming out of Kron 6, and they are coming back in this game. ETC taking a lot of damage, and down he goes. So that's three men for nothing, and that happened because... Reborn Knights were split. They sent three men in the top and two, two of them were in the mid. Kron 6 recognized that and rotated hard with all five members and that could be the team fight that turns this game around because they will get very little value out of that turn in. and it brings them very close to same level as their opponents, Reborn Knights Red. So a good hard rotation, catching three members out and bringing this game very close to even. 
I imagine the play here for Kron 6 is they're going to get 16, get on the same talents here, and then they're going to try to force turn in. That seems like the play to go for me. They are currently sitting on 91, 91 gems, which is like one and a half turn ins. If they play this right, they could get back to back turn ins if they wanted to. So both teams now are on evil talent tier, on even talent tier. And just waiting for Kron 6 to make their move. As they're the team with all the gems right now, the, the ball is kind of in their court to make this move. 42 of those gems on Muradin, and there's the root. The ETC was going for the follow-up stun. However, he ate a Stormbolt from Muradin. Both teams kind of scattering all over the place, feeling each other out, waiting for somebody to make a mistake. And nobody really does, although that... Genji took a lot of damage uh, from Gul'dan there. Here's a flanking Anubarak. He does get slowed by Tassadar. Isolated out by the ETC. And here's the 5-on-5 five -five team engagement. This, The way this fight goes is going to go a long way to determine this game. Genji isolated out and rooted. He will go down, as will Brightwing. And this is going to be a boss play here for Reborn Knight's Red. No, they are not making the boss play. They are going to go straight to wall. I want to see them do something. I feel like they're wasting this opportunity, this indecisive shot calling here that if it were me and I'm in comms, I am calling straight to boss as soon as those two people die. They really didn't do much with that advantage that they had there. And Kron 6 able to catch out Gul'dan, and he, Gul'dan is going to go down. Once again, the Knights are split, and they are caught out. I don't know how Gul'dan isn't dead yet, but he was able to live. Genji now diving in, ETC saved by the Crystal Aegis, and now both teams retreating. Uh, that was a missed opportunity, I think, for Reborn Knights Red there. A clean 2 nothing team fight, and they really didn't do anything with that advantage. They could have gone to gotten out of keep wall, maybe. I, I think the boss call was the call to make. They didn't do that either. And Thrall is still trying to solo that camp. There's a one-man mosh pit onto Anubarak. He is cleansed out. Agent G is still rocking out. Done onto Muradin. And there's the Horrify, the X-Strike, the Power Slide. It looks like a noob will go down. Gul'dan is going to go down on the backside. No, he was down to 28 hit points. Gul'dan down to 28 hit points. And he is able to get away. Vala and Anubarak both fall. Another team fight victory here for Reborn Nice Red. And this time, let's see if they take advantage of it. Take down a keep wall. Go get the boss. Do something with his two advantage. And this time it looks like they might be doing just that. Thrall dropped off his gems at bottom turn in. And now they are all making their way up top. They are going to have 20 seconds. 15 seconds now before all members of Krond are available to contest this, and they will most certainly get a boss out of this. Boss secured by the Reborn Red Knights, and Genji caught out isolated. He is able to dash away, though. They don't quite have enough for a turn in to go with the boss. In fact, Kron 6 very wisely took a free turn in of their own. So they will get push in two lanes, while the boss will, of course, negate the top lane push. So let's see if they try to get a keep out of that. Look at all that damage Muradin is taking. That's so much damage from the Ghoul Dam. And they are not going to push with the boss anymore. It is already burned down. That boss was able to secure about half a keep on the verge of 20 for the reborn Red Knights. They do get free clear on mid. They're going to get free clear on bottom. However, in the top lane, nice decision here for Kron 6. 
They're going to take this fort. They can't stay too long, though. The Knights are coming up as a five stack. They are coming up with their level 20s. Red team really needs to pull back here, and they're going to. Let's see if we get a Sundering here to split somebody out. No, no Sundering there. I kind of expected them to try to split somebody out, but I guess they decided uh, that the uh, initiation wasn't there. And they let Kron 6 walk back to their base safely. That last team fight, I was waiting for Gul'dan to die. He had 28 hit points, and he got away. 28! It's not the lowest I've seen in a chair league game, though. The lowest hit points I've seen in a game was 2. I saw somebody down to 2 hit points in the middle of a team fight, and he lived to tail the tail. Still, though, Gul'dan a few times this game has definitely been living by the skin of his teeth. Shield of Hope for Ariel. We have Gul'dan's Escape Talent. Bolt of the Storm for Thrall. Death Metal for ETC. Now, whenever you're playing against an ETC, there is an ETC on the other team, you have to check his 20 talent. You absolutely have to check his 20 talent. Uh, if you get baited into a big-time death metal post-20, the game can be over. So, uh, Kron 6 needs to make sure they are, they are aware. We're even going to double-check here that ETC went death metal, and he did. So, they need to be aware of that. If you see Muradin looking like he's suiciding in, that's why. <laughs> Chain Lightning does secure the ball. Actually, that was Gul'dan who secured it. And now the Knights see blood, and they are moving in for the kill. There's the Mosh Pit. Three-man Mosh. And the follow-up, Horrify, there's the game. That is absolutely 100% game. Well played by both teams. Uh, despite a couple of, I would say, ill-advised um, splitting up of their team, that Kron 6 was able to punish them for, all in all, a very well-played game by Reborn Knights Red. And they take game one of this best of three series. So game two map will be decided by Kron 6. And the Reborn Knights will, of course, get first pick. Fairly entertaining game. Uh, and the mid, the mid definitely bogged down a, uh, a little bit there as both teams were, <laughs> were getting, their, uh, getting their feet under them as they felt each other out. However, toward the end, both teams uh, put down a pretty good show toward the end, toward the end there. Um, I'm, I don't think I saw... Uh, chat, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think I saw one haymaker that game. Did I miss it? And if there was a haymaker, I don't think there was certainly an impactful haymaker. So I don't think the kind of bruiser build on the Muradin um, worked out particularly well. And we are going to Battlefield of Eternity for game number two. I think this is the best two-lane map in Heroes. It's also one of my favorites generally. The games are usually pretty fun to watch. Tomb can be a little bit, um, a little dull sometimes. Uh, Battlefield of Eternity, though, not usually uh, dull. Usually you have good games. The objective forces both teams to kind of duke it out a little bit. And here we go for game two. So that, that mosh pit uh, to end the game uh, really put the stamp on that for Reborn Knights Red. And you have to see, sometimes um, sometimes the momentum of the end of a game like that can carry into um, can carry into a game. So it, we'll have to see if that momentum carries into game two. All right, here we are. Draft for Game 2 at Battlefield of Eternity. This is Division 2 Chair League. It is a best of three series. Currently, Reborn Knights Red leading one game to nothing. 
Uh, I also want to say I do appreciate it when both teams roll into the game too really quickly. Uh, as a caster, dead time, especially when you're solo casting. If you're duo casting, you can kind of banter a little bit with whoever's in here with you. But solo casting, dead air time, you feel like you're talking to yourself. So I really appreciate uh, rolling into game two quickly. So it will be Reborn Knights. with the first ban. And they first ban Genji. Uh, Genji, I would say, in if played well, he, I think he's one of the more difficult heroes to play. But when played well, is also one of the most impactful heroes. And that's why at high level playing and competitive, you see him banned so much. He can be pretty annoying, just generally. So you never mind a Genji ban. And the Malthiel ban, I like that one as well. Malthiel also very aggravating to play against. Kron 6 will ban out the Malthier. First pick, no Uther. Man. That's a little bit surprising. I, usually I tend to see uh, a DPS, somebody to race, like a Greyman or a Vala, but Uther, uh, probably the top healer. Um, so... Jason and his squad making sure they secure Uther first pick. Kron 6 now has two selections. I would be very surprised if one of them was not Vala or Greymane. Both of them are excellent at racing on the Immortal. A couple weeks ago, there was a Reddit thread that came out where some wonderful person did the math and the math on who burns the immortal the fastest. And levels one through seven, that person is actually Rhaegar. Vala is the fastest over the course of the game, but early game it's Rhaegar. I thought that was really interesting, and the reason he burns it so fast is the double lightning bond talent at one um, allows him to burn it faster than anyone else levels one through seven. Vala and Tacit are selected by Kron, both great, great picks. Uh, Vala is really heavily prioritized and contested on Battlefield of Eternity in particular. And Tassadar, of, cor of course, in a great spot right now with the slowing Tickle Beam, and he pairs excellently with Vala. Two picks here coming from Reborn Knights Red. I would, I would say Greymane, we're going to see it. Uh, Divine Shield on Greymane is very good. So I would be surprised if we didn't see a gray main here. Ariel gray main. So we're going double support into the gray main. Interesting. So now it may not be a divine shield. You actually might have the divine storm here uh, with an Ariel on deck. Ban coming out for Kron 6. They're going to ban a tank. Uh, some kind of tank that they don't want to see. Possibly uh, Anubarak, although... They, oh, there it is. Okay, it looks like they're going to ban Anubarak. That does surprise me a little bit because they need a tank as well, and they have next pick. So unless they don't want Anubarak, you want to leave them on the board and force the Reborn Knights Red to ban out the Anubarak. So they're really thinking about it. They are hovering in Uberac still. Seven seconds left. We're going to see this ban come out here pretty quickly. And it is actually the Anubarak ban. Now a ban coming out for Reborn Knights Red. I imagine a support ban here. Uh, Stukov is a possibility. We could see him. And with the grouping that is going to happen on this map, you could definitely see a Stukov. Um, and they go Rhaegar. Rhaegar, always great, and uh, I mentioned his underrated aspect of the burn that he provides on the Battlefield of Eternity is um, often overlooked. He's just a solid healer overall, but on Battlefield of Eternity, his murking abilities and his ability to put damage onto the Immortal makes him more valuable than on other maps. Two selections now coming for Kron 6. I think we're going to see a tank and a healer. That's what I would expect here. So a primary healer, I still think Stukov may be the best on the board. 
and a tank, maybe an Arthas. Arthas does go into gray main very nicely. Helps slow down that attack speed and zone him away. So we could see an Arthas here. We could see a Stukov here. Um, and instead, Stitches and Mouth. Okay. Um, as long as you have the isolation. The thing is, though, with... With an Uther and an Ariel on the other team, I don't think they're going to be able to isolate somebody out and blow them up with a hook. With Guardian of Ancient Kings on Uther, anybody they hook in Root's going to have 50 armor, plus they're going to be hooking a Crystal Aegis right into the middle of their team. It's going to be almost a bomb. Lunara and ETC to round out the comp. To round out the comp for the Reborn Knight's Red. Sorry about that. My uh, wife just came home, so I was saying hello. So we have Lunara and ETC to round out the comp for Battlefield of Eternity. And one last pick coming out of Kron 6. Another frontliner? Maybe a bruiser? Sonya, possibly. Artanis is very good. However, Artanis and Stitches kind of do the same thing with the swap and the hook. So that would be a little bit redundant. Let's see what they go. They're really thinking about this one. Five seconds. Who's it going to be? Alarak. All right. Alarak. So there's a lot of healers in this game as picked up on uh, by the chat here. I am curious how... I think this is the situation, the only situation, really, where ETC can solo tank. It's where there's two healers behind him to keep him up because he gets really chunked down in that front line. Um, I've played a ton of ETC. I think he's my second or third highest hero, and right now he just gets burned down very quickly in that front line. Blue team, Reborn Knights Red, Jason playing Ariel, Simply Kill playing Lunara, Phantom Puppy playing Greymane, Dendi Smasher playing Uther, and Agent G once again on ETC. Red team, Kron 6, we have Ding playing Malfurion, and Koza moved from, Malf or moved from Muradin to Tassadar, Luket on the Vala, T Wong on Stitches, and Lazy French on the Alarak. Prepare yourselves for battle, heroes. Very curious to see how this game pans out. Um, I think I like the Reborn Knights draft better, other than right now I'm always a little bit leery of the solo tank ETC. The battle begins in However, I don't know how much seconds. value they're going to get out of a hook with Uther and Ariel. I, I don't think they're going to get much out of that. Uh, so if you're not getting value out of Stitch's hooks, um, that's so much of why you take him that you're not getting any value. So let's see how that goes. See if ETC can hold the front line against Stitch's and Alarak. Little skirmishing. We have Greyman and Alarak in the top lane. Now this is an advantage to Alarak. Alarak's going to be a little better in the solo lane than Greymane. So advantage to Kron 6 in the top lane. Whoop. Nice roots onto Uther. Now they did get value out of that hook. However, this is pre-10 and pre-Guardian of Ancient Kings. We really need to see if they're going to get value out of that hook once 7 and 10 come online. That was a really nice hook coming out of T-Wong. Nice follow-up boost from Ding, and they're able to take out Uther. I don't think you're going to see that happen, though, after the level 7 and 10 talents are selected.
So let's go check in on the top lane. It looks like Greymane, Phantom Pumpy, doing a nice job. He's actually bullying Alarak out of there, so good on him. Once again, back to the bottom. I try not to ignore the uh, solo laners. A lot of times in cast, the solo laners just kind of get ignored, so we try to pop up there every now and then uh, and make sure we pay attention to those guys because they're just as important as their teammates. Now we have the first immortal, and the first immortal always spawns top and bottom, and then this halftime it always spawns on your enemy side of the map in the offensive part. So blue team going offensive, Uther getting booted and taking a lot of damage, ETC power sliding backward through the enemy team into his own team. There's the hook on Lunara, she is probably not going anywhere and she is not. So nice, nice early game by Kron 6. They are definitely winning these early battles. The slowing laser holding ETC in place long enough for the damage to come out. And now Red will rotate aggressively. Vala starting to put the damage onto the blue team's immortal. So Kron 6 will probably win halftime right here. And then these immortals will swap to the offensive side of the map. So far, two nice hooks from T. Wong, both securing kills. What we want to watch for after 7, after 10, does that keep happening? My guess is probably not. Probably not. First Immortal of the game will be secured by Kron 6. And a fairly sizable shield for the first Immortal of the game. I would imagine you're going to see Alarak return top and all four members rotate bottom. No, all five members coming top, they have caught out Phantom Puppy. So we talked about momentum mid-game, or uh, between these two games, and that momentum from the end of game one not carrying over. Kron 6 showing no ill effects from their game one loss and coming out with an early game five unresponded to kills. T. Wong has been absolutely money with the early game hooks, and they now have a game, or a level and a half lead, and this immortal is eyeing the fort. Uh, first immortals can be kind of weak. Usually you don't get much more than this. If they get even half of this fort down, that will be a very successful early game immortal, and they're going for more than half. It looks like this bottom fort will go down Yes, there it goes. However, they traded Vala for that fort. Probably a good trade. It's very unusual without a Sylvanas to see a fort go down on the first Immortal phase. Hook just missed onto Agent G. He probably would have been okay, but you never know. So we'll go ahead and check on those talents for you guys. Cocktail build coming out of Greymane. The sweeping build coming out of Ariel once again. Uh, you're going to see Nature's Toxin out of Lunara at 7. Uther going to kind of typical um, build. And there's a hook on the ETC. There's the roots out of Mal. Agent G taking a lot of damage. Was down to 70 some odd hit points. And then the Moonburn gets him. So 6 kills to 1. Early advantage to Kron 6. Ariel taking a lot of damage. Jason slowly hovering away to safety. Hook just missing simply kill on Lunara. The second immortal could lead to a snowball. If Kron 6 plays this right, if they're able to secure 10 just as or before the second immortal comes up, uh, it'll put them at a very strong advantage with no fort to attack at the bottom. All members of Kron 6 have rotated top, and now they're going to break up and go into the mercenary camps. So immortals spawn in aggressive positioning. Both teams jump on them right away, and <clears throat> this time, at least initially, Reborn Knights Red are winning this race, and now it's very close. I'm not quite sure who's going to win halftime, but it's going to be really close, and it is Kron 6. Kron 6 did win halftime just barely, and now both teams pushing on the Red Immortal. A double silence coming out of Alarak. The Knights in full retreat. 
hook comes out onto Phantom Puppy, he is able to barrel roll away to safely, or disengage to safely, as it were. However, the knights are in full retreat, their health bars looking much lower than Kron 6. And there's another hook onto the Uther, stun coming out to try to save himself. And the counter engage, Lazy French, the poison from Lunara may get him, he is so low. This counter engage by the Knights is able to secure a kill on Malfurion and the poison, or was it the Greymane? It was Phantom Puppy diving deep on the Greymane, is able to secure the kill on the Alarak. Despite that, Avala on the backside was able to burn down the Immortal fast enough to secure yet another Immortal for Kron 6 and they are also on the verge of their level 10s. So all members have spawned, they are on their way. It looks like Tassadar is gonna try to save the bottom fort. However, all other members of Kron 6 working their way to the top lane. Heroic abilities are here. We have Lane of Vengeance for Vala, Putrid Bile for Stitches. I believe that's Counter Charge on Alarak, or Counter-Strike on Alarak. <laughs> Force Wall from Tassadar and Twilight Dream from Malfurion. Lunara will go down. Full heroic usage coming out from Kron 6. I think that may have been a mistake by Reborn Knights Red. Once those heroic talents came out and back up, you see the fort. You definitely don't take their fight. And they paid for it with their lives. Two members going down, Lunara and Uther. Phantom Puppy taking a ton of damage from Alarak. <laughs> Vala gets taken down by minions. She was tanking damage from the towers and the forts. And now Knight's trying to re-engage. Kron 6 will withdraw. Heroics coming out by Reborn Knights. We have Crystal Aegis for Ariel. Uh, Leaping Strike for Lunara. Is that Divine Storm? for Uther, and it is Divine Storm for Uther, Mosh Pit for ETC, and Cursed Bullet for Greyman. So pretty even game, he definitely had some back and forth here. Looping Strike, double Leaping Strike on the Stitches, burns him down quickly. And this is the point of the game where you have to wonder, with all of the tools now available to the Reborn Knights, just how much value is that hook going to get? In the early game, it was all Kron 6. They were hooking and rooting and doing a lot of damage, picking people off. Now, however, with the tools available to both supports, Will they be able to take advantage of hooks coming out of stitches? With a man advantage, the knights go straight onto the red team immortal. And there's a one man, uh, yeah, one man mosh pit. And now Agent G on ETC caught out of position. He goes down. Stitches eats a curse bullet. And there's the hook onto Phantom Puppy using the stuns from the immortal to follow up. Crystal Agent is there to save him. He does disengage despite being silenced and only ETC goes down. There's the wall to isolate out Jason. There's the silence and the divine storm for Peels coming out of Uther. <clears throat> Cocktail gets Vala. This battle is all over the place. We went from Kron 6 having the man advantage to now the reborn red knights have the, bad, have the uh, man advantage. It looks like both teams though went to tap well went to lick their wounds, and now both teams working their way out toward the mid. Good decision here from Reborn Red's Knights. They're gonna get the Bruiser Camps and put a little pressure onto Kron 6. Make them decide, do they want to defend the camp or do they want to defend the Immortal? So now you want to have, see Patience out of Reborn Red Knights. I'd like to see them side soak those bottom lanes, maybe try to get 13, because both teams are on the verge of 13 here kind of posturing around a little bit, waiting to see what the other one is going to do. Um, now it looks like Kron 6 has responded in kind, so both teams now have bruisers pushing, 
now level 13 talent advantage and here comes Kron 6 they went in fast both teams at level 13 now no advantage to anybody Uther caught out with the force wall and absolutely <laughs> annihilated the silence the force wall the stun there's the hook onto gray main <laughs> is able to get away largely and now Lunara gets isolated out. Crystal Aegis will keep her up for about three seconds. Malfurion has gone down. Lunara has gone down. Uther has gone down. Now Greymane to Reborn Red Knights in full retreat. Jazon will go down as well. ETC, the only man alive. Only man left to tell the tale of the battle today. Kron 6 will secure halftime on this immortal phase of the game. In the meantime, however, they did lose bottom fort, and mercenaries are pushing onto the keep wall. That bottom fort for Kron 6 was really, really low, and the Merc camps were able to finish the job. However, for the third, is it third consecutive immortal phase, will be secured by Kron 6. So they are up in kills 13 to 7. They have secured all of the objectives in this game thus far. And now they will have a fairly strong Immortal. It has about a three-quarter strength shield. We'll be pushing down bottom lane. There is no fort here to defend. This battle will be fought at the Keep Wall. Reborn Red Knights here have a bush party coming. I don't know if I like that. ETC isolated too far away from his team hook. Crystal Age is forced to come out to keep him alive. It does not matter. Down he goes. Double Leaping Strike will get Alarak eventually... No, heals come out to keep Alarak alive. Reborn Red Knights have now lost three members. Ariel, Uther, and ETC. They, once again, kind of split up their team. You had four members in a bush and ETC up at the top. And Kron 6 just completely isolated ETC and blew him up to start that engagement. And it all snowballed downhill from there. Level 16 talents pick up for Kron 6. A hook onto Greymane. <laughs> Lunara isolated out by Alarak. Uh, props to Lazy French. He's done a really nice job this game with his combos and silences to isolate out heroes from their teammates. And they are eyeballing core. This might be a little early. However, this Immortal is very, very strong. And not much to lose by going for game here. There's the Mosh Pit. It does isolate Vala for a second. However, she's able to get out alive. Core down to 28%. This is going to be game two going to Kron 6 in a very dominant fashion. I doubted the Stitches pick. I doubted they'd be able to get the isolation um, with, with two supports. Um, however, I was wrong. <laughs> they were able to get those isolations. They did win the team fights. They won all of the Immortal races, and they won Game 2. And now we are going to Game 3 in this very close best of three set between Reborn Red Knights and Kron 6. Uh, first game was pretty close throughout until the end. That one, it, it looked close, but it seemed like Kron 6 um, was controlling the game throughout. Uh, other than a couple of hitches there in the middle, that kind of seemed like their game to lose once it got going. Okay, while teams do this, I'm going to step away for two seconds to fill up my water because it's really hot where I live. One second. All right, back in a jiffy, and game three will be on Dragonshire. I uh, don't see, I haven't seen too much of Dragonshire lately. Uh, if it uh, goes kind of like game one, it's going to be all about the rotations. Game one was about the rotations. I think the game two also will be about the, rot or game three, I should say, also about the rotations. Uh, Dragonshire is all about controlling multiple points at the same time. And that comes down to being on the same page with your teammates, rotating, catching your teammates out where they're uh, not supposed to be. So we will see which one of those teams 
can do that better. All right, once again, I appreciate both teams. They really got these lobbies going quickly, move straight into games. I appreciate that. Dragon and shot. here we are, game three draft. Winner will, of course, be 2-0 and in the young chair league season. Loser will fall to 1-1. One and one. Cron 6, first pick, first ban. Uh, I think... If my memory serves correctly, they've banned Malthiel in both games so far. So you would hazard a guess that it'll be Malthiel banned again. And there it is. They're hovering Malthiel. That's certainly what it's going to be. Just waiting for the team captain to click on the confirm button. No, they switched off of Malthiel. Now they are covering Uther. So a little indecision here on if they want to deal with Malthiel or Uther. And it looks like they've changed their tune. And Uther going to be the band coming out for Cron 6. Reborn Knights Red. Going to ban Genji again. Could see the Genji ban. Malthiel could see the Malthiel ban. Dahaka also very strong. It's not a hero we've seen in this set. But a good solo laner gives your team such an advantage on Dragonshire. Dahaka is an excellent solo laner. And uh, his global also really good for rotating. Globals on Dragonshire really give your team a leg up if they don't have a way to respond to those globals. So, you, you know, Falstad, Dahaka, Brightwing... You know, even Zagara with Nidus Network, if played correctly, can can really be uh, can, tr can make solid contributions to a victory on Dragonshire. Reborn Knights Red, Raw dipping all the way into their time pool. Two seconds, one second, and the ban will be Malthia. All right, so that actually is probably what Cron Six wanted. Those are the two heroes they were considered banning. And they get both banned, so. First pick for Cron 6. I am surprised that both of those maps we didn't see a Stukov. Those are both times where you're grouped. Stukov is solid in, in maps where you're forced to rotate as a group. Uh, I don't think he's as good on Dragonshire as he would be on BOE and Tomb. Uh, now, we have seen Cron 6 run with the first pick Genji tonight. So that's certainly a possibility. Maybe we see another Genji. The noob is still out there, and both teams have prioritized the a noob for picks and bans. Really, really thinking about it. And it is Dahaka. Okay, so that's a nice pick coming out of Cron 6. One of the fun things about seeing a best of three is watching the teams kind of adjust to each other as they get to know each other a little bit better. Um, the past seasons of chair league, uh, games were either a best of one or one game set or a best of three. And you know, the game, the one game bands got a little stale, but once you get into these best of threes and you see what the other teams are doing and what they're good at, it's really fun to watch the drafts evolve as the teams start to feel each other out. Uh, Kron 6 switching from Malthiel to, to Uther is, is a really good example of that. And they go Ariel, Genji. So Reborn Knights Red has consistently prioritized their healers in both of these games. No change tonight, or uh, no change in game three. Ariel first pick paired up with a Genji. So sometime through this draft, they're going to get a battery for Ariel. Two picks coming for Cron 6. I wonder if... I've seen teams run triple global on this 
in a situation like this where you get to Hawk and the other team doesn't respond with a global. Uh, but not here. They're going to go with a Taunt Varian, or I imagine Taunt Varian, and a Greymane. So, a uh, single target isolating blow up coming out so far for Kron 6. Ban time for the Knights. It's going to be a support. So, who don't they want to see on a support? And it's Tassadar. Uh, who's, I know he's tagged as a support. But Tassadar is really more of a utility than a support. Uh, either way, you're not going to see Tassadar this game. They don't want the shields on Greymane. And this time they're hovering the ETC ban. We've seen ETC picked twice by the Knights. Uh, this would be the first time in a long time I've seen ETC banned, <laughs> if he were banned here. But this goes back to what I was talking about, is these best of three sets, as the teams learn each other, the drafts change. And this ETC ban would be another example of that. They've picked ETC twice. It seems to be a comfort pit pick uh, for the Knights. Mosh Pit, despite his standing in the meta now, Mosh Pit can be game deciding. Um, when we saw that in game one with that great three man Mosh Pit to secure the game on the core. They have gone all away from ETC though, and now they're looking to ban Anubarak. And they do. Uh, I think that's a good ban. Anubarak can kind of dive with Genji a little if they want him to. Cocoon is uh, fun. It's got stun for days. So blue team, the Knights here. Have two picks. We're gonna see a tank. I'll be surprised if we didn't. And whoever the Ariel battery is, is who we're gonna see here. Could do Gul'dan. Gul'dan pairs uh, excellent with Ariel. We've already seen the Knights pull that off uh, in game one. The Gul'dan Ariel. I would not be at all surprised to see that again. The Earth is Gul'dan. So the one thing missing from the Knights comp now is a solo laner to go up there and compete with Tahaka. I will fight to my last breath. Rhaegar selected for Kron 6, and now they're going to round out their comp with some kind of some kind of um, another damage dealer to supplement Greymane. Um, if they want to continue to go into that target isolation blow up, you know, you could see Kael'thas. If they want to get another global, you could always Falstad here. Gust is very powerful. Falstad does solid damage, and you would have another global on a map that really puts a premium on rotating throughout the battlefield to secure the Dragon Knight. So Falstad could be something we see here. Kron 6, they're dipping deep, deep into their time pool. And almost out of time. Let's see who they go with. Go with Li Ming. So Li Ming and Greymane go very nicely together. And, and with Varian because of the taunt. Because Greymane can help secure those resets for Li Ming. So that's a nice pick there. I expect to see Knight's solo laner here. Maybe a Sonya. Uh, could see a Sonya in the top lane with Dahaka. Uh, that would also give them a second frontliner, which they kind of need. Um, if they want somebody that's going to bully in the top lane, Zagara would definitely bully Tahaka out of that top lane. They would be a solo tank Arthas, which there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, most most teams nowadays uh, tend to run uh, double front line. So picking a Zagara into that would leave Arthas by himself, which teams tend not to do. Uh, my guess would be Sonya if they have a Sonya player. Um, and ETC is still on the board, and it's Leora. So that's a tough matchup for Leoric. I assume Leoric will be in the solo lane against Dahaka. And anytime Leoric lands the W on Dahaka, Dahaka can just burrow and break it. So it's a very tough matchup for Leoric, and it should favor um, Dahaka as well. Uh, I do like Kron's draft, I think, a little bit more here. I think they have the advantage in the solo lane, uh, and I think they 
have advantage in the kill pressure. <clears throat> the Arthas is also a nice pick in the Gray Man, though. That's not something we talked about. Gray Man can respond, though, uh, with Cursed Bullet. Cursed Bullet chunks Arthas down big time. Here we go. Game three on Dragonshire. The blue team, the reborn Red Knights, Jason once again on Ariel, Phantom Puppy on Leoric, Dendi Smasher on Arthas, Agent G moving from ETC to Genji, and Simply Kill on Gul'dan. Red team. Kron 6, featuring Ding seconds. on Dahaka, T. Wong on Greymane, Kaza on Leeming, Lazy four, French on three, Varian, two, and I one. forgot one who's hiding in there. Let oh, Luquette the on Rhaegar. So all five members of Kron 6 going to the mid lane where they will find nobody waiting for them because the reborn Red Knights have opted to... Break into lanes already. A little mini party bush. Actually, they're attacking this tower here. And they get it down a little bit, though. That's not usually something you see work out very successfully uh, without a Lunara. So here's the four man. Both teams breaking into the four man. Dahaka and Leoric squaring off in the top lane. So this is a matchup that favors Dahaka. We'll check up here from time to time to see how they're doing on that. Ancient shrines awaken. Control them and let loose So it looks like the they're leaving Genji knight. in the mid. Rather than rotating, they're going to leave Gul'dan, Ariel, and Arthas bottom while Genji is soaking mid. Genji took a lot of damage, though, though probably a charge from the Varian. So let's see how these teams settle into rotation. Currently, Kron putting pressure in the mid lane. Now the Knights putting pressure in the bottom lane. There is a detaining strike onto the Varian right into the wall. Four members coming down here. Arthas and Ariel eating a big leaming orb. And they will go back and tap, or at least Arthas will. So no soak right now in the mid lane, though, for Kron 6. So Kron 6 is trying to do a four-man. Uh, whereas the Reborn Red Knights are leaving Genji in the mid. <clears throat> Not very much focus there. By Kron 6. And now once the members of Red rotated up, Blue aggressively invaded the point. And now they will be... Four nope, they left Grey Maiden in this time. So this time, Blue has the advantage. Four. And now Genji is running back mid to try to get the DK. Uh, early game DKs. Not very powerful, and pretty unusual to secure one uh, unless you kill somebody or force somebody to hurt back. So I'd be pretty surprised if the knights were able to secure this. And Arthas goes down, first blood of the game. The reset with the Lee Ming, and now Red takes back, or at least resets, the bottom shrine. Gul'dan really put out a ton of damage. Varian! Oh, Genji, tower though for the Varian. He was able to secure the hill. However, he was not able to get it alive. However, a flanking burrow from Dahaka lands the tongue on Gul'dan. The orb from Leeming just misses. However, Wolf Rhaegar able to land the wolf bite and secure the kill. So three kills in favor of one for Kron 6. And Dahaka has burrow now off cooldown. Makes the long walk back to the top lane. From a caster's perspective, I'll tell you, it, um, Dragonshire is one of the hardest maps, battlefields, to cast on. Um, because there's so much going on throughout the entire map, it's very hard to not miss at least something, because chances are there's something going on where you're not looking pretty much all the time. Gul'dan does get charged by Varian, however, with Taunt, they're not able to lock him down. Raymane running very low. Nice heals coming out of Rhaegar. He is rooted though. Genji trying to secure the kill and he gets away with no, he doesn't. Gul'dan, Poison, able to finish the job. 
And Rhaegar goes down. The Haka is securing top, so there will be no DK here for the Reborn Red Knights. did even out the talents. Both teams now pretty much dead even in talents. Both teams on the verge of getting level 8. Kills 3 to 2, so very close. Um, I have a feeling, given how the first two teams went, another flank from the Haka, and they're able to five-man collapse down on Arthas. However, did Genji get there in time? No, he did not. Given how games 1 and 2 went, I would be surprised if this wasn't a pretty close game. However, I do think that uh, Kron 6 has shown a little bit more aggression in the early going, and I will give the early game advantage to them just a smidgen. They are taking out bottom wall. They Getting these uh, fountains is a really big deal, because they make it much harder to contest the points. In the meantime, the orc is getting free push top, but you can tell it's not going as well. However, Kron 6 may have overstayed their welcome. Rhaegar gets rooted. And Varian almost out of Protex. That should be two charges. He should be out now. They do walk away, and the Knight's not able to secure any kills. And once again, Tahaka comes in on the flank, grabs somebody, and they're able to secure the kill on Arthas. I really, really thought that uh, Kron had stayed a little bit too long there, and you were going to see somebody go down. However, they were able to get away just enough. And Dahaka flanked one more time to secure the hills. Dahaka's been really nice about coming in and a time just in the right time to flank and secure kills. He's done it three times this game. So both teams have their heroics now. Cursed Bullet for Greymane, Taunt for Varian, and there's the charge, there's the taunt, and Lee Ming misses the combo on Gul'dan. It won't matter, he'll go down anyway because of the Rhaegar. However, that was uh, definitely a miscalculation by Kaza on Leeming there. Ancestral Heal on Rhaegar, Wave of Force onto Leeming, and Isolation on Dahaka, I believe is what that is. And it is. For the League One Red Knights, Crystal Aegis once again on Ariel, Horrify on Gul'dan, and Tomb on Leoric, Army of the Dead on Arthas, and I believe that is Dragon Blade. It is on the Genji. So let's see how this game goes now that both teams are post-10. It's been very close uh, thus far. A slight advantage to Con 6, and there's the flanking to Haka one more time. They do get to Arthas. The Crystal Aegis completely wastes the Cursed Bullet. And they are putting a ton of damage into Arthas, but they are unable to take him down. Ancestral Healing keeps Greymane up, and this is a this is probably the first full team fight. However, the Orc is not here, so this is a five on four in favor of Pawn Six. They are able to secure the first kill. I question the shot calling on taking that fight without Lior present. You're, you're fighting at a disadvantage. They were able to, they lost the cooldown. They used pretty much all of their cooldowns on it, and now they will lose top four. And in the meantime, they probably will eventually get that fort, but I, I don't think it was worth the trade. And they steal the Knights Giants as well. Arthas very low. Wave of Force knocks him back to the enemy team. And Crystal Aegis unable to keep him alive. Greymane may also go down. And he does. Gul'dan able to secure the kill on the Greymane. So that is a 1-4-1 one, one in this bottom lane skirmish.
Uh, Leoric silenced by Dahaka, and no taunt coming out on Gul'dan because of a nice detainment strike coming out of Ariel. So both teams skirmishing. Structural advantage definitely in favor of Kron 6. Kills in favor of Kron 6. However, neither team able to secure a Dragon Knight so far. Uh, this game has the looks of one that will go down to a post-20 team fight to decide the game. That just has the look of how this game is going to go. Kron 6 collapsing on bottom. Once again, Leork is not here, and the Knights are in trouble. This is a 5-on-4. Leork is coming on the flank. He will not be here soon enough. Gul'dan eats a cursed bullet. Crystal Age is able to keep him up for now. However, the Horrify isolates out Li Ming, and she goes down. The Haka very low, and he goes down as well. Simply kill with an excellent Horrify there, completely turning the fight around, because with the positioning on the, the way that team fight started, the Knights had no business whatsoever winning that team fight. They were getting flanked. However, they turned it around beautifully. A absolutely gorgeous Horrify coming out of Simply Kill, and that will almost assuredly or not, Varian is sneakily taking this bottom shrine. And he gets out wisely. And Dahaka coming in. Oh, this is a two on three. The Dragon Knight is going to be secured in the mid lane. First Dragon Knight of the game going to the Reborn Red Knights. So let's see what they do with this. This is not an early game night, which don't have a lot of health. This is more of a mid game night. It looks like they're trying to put pressure on mid. I would like to see them rotate bottom just because the fort's already damaged. Oh, there goes the entomb. The first entomb it seems to take. Leora keeps a cursed bullet. Health bar is being drained. The Dragon Knight is taunted. Isolation goes on for Leora. He's walking around blindly in the back there. And nobody goes down. A full five on five engagement where almost everybody pressed their R buttons and nobody died. Uh, what I started to say was I'd like to see the Knights here put pressure on the bottom lane because it's already low, the fort is itself. Uh, also, the Mercs push down the bottom lane, not down the mid lane. So uh, we have a little more kill pressure, wind condition pressure, coming out of the bottom lane because of the Giants. They are able to secure bot fort, and once again, a full, full team fight going down here. This is absolutely crazy. Ancestral, I think he misclicked. I think that was supposed to be for Varian. Uh, however, there's the tongue onto Leoric, and two kills for one, despite being down a talent tier. Leoric and Arthas, the front line, being melted for the Reborn Red Knights. Only Li Ming lost for Kron 6. So as we've been saying, this game has been close throughout. Structurally, very, very close. However, with top and bottom forts gone, structural lead now to Reborn Red Knights, and despite having fewer kills, they also have a level lead. Um, and I maintain that this game has the look of one where it will be decided in a post-20 team fight, and that's how this game is going to go. Uh, let's talk about Leoric briefly. He has one of the strongest 20s, power spike-wise, in the game. I forget what the ability is called, but it's where he gets, what, 5% of his uh, basic health back and hits per auto attack, and it basically means Leoric's auto attacks just hit like an absolute freight train post-20. So we really want to keep an eye on that. Power gathers within the shrines. Unleash the dragon's wrath. So about 20 seconds before the dragon altar spawn, one more time... Ariel's going top to clean up. In the meantime, the Kron 6 team is kind of split between mid and bot. 
And you have to wonder if they're going to go for the mercs down here or not. The dragon awaits, heroes. Free him and destroy your enemy. And they don't. So top lane secured by Reborn Red Knights. Bottom lane secured by Kron 6. Both teams kind of blundered around each other without, I don't think, really realizing the other was there. Kron 6 in a slightly weird position because their team is split into two groups here. Uh, they may catch Li Ming rotating here, and they do. Cursed Bullet put right into the York. He takes a lot of life. They didn't go on to Li Ming like I thought they would. There's the Entomb and the Fortify. Rhaegar is the first one to go down, closely followed by Gul'dan. So a one for one so far. Greymane running for his life on the backside and then simply decides to turn on Genji. Unable to secure the kill. T Wong running for his life, disengages away, and it looks like Genji's gonna mop Here that up, lane. and there he goes. So two members of Red Team taken down, Rhaegar and Greymane. Only Gul'dan dropped from the Reborn Red Knights. So now Reborn Red Knights are probably going to try to soak to 20 as best they can, put pressure on the map. Genji was able to rotate bottom and get the um, shrine down there. The Haka now going bottom. I, ooh, this is interesting. Genji in a bit of trouble. He's able to ninja away. And there's the Entomb onto the Haka. He's now in a tough spot. He was at full life. However, now he is not... Genji traded for Dahaka. However, the recently spawned members of Red Team have arrived. Their health bars are much higher. So Genji and Lior fall. Only Dahaka falls from the Red Team. So this is going to be Kron 6's opportunity to secure the Dragon Knight, and they do with the man advantage. <clears throat> so first Dragon Knight of the game for Kron 6. And they clear the minion wave, and then they rotate bottom. I like this decision. As I mentioned with the last Dragonite, bottom lane is where you want to go. There's mercs that push on it. It's a much better win condition than mid lane. And furthermore, now they're pushing on to the keep instead of a fort. Arthas able to barely get away. Uh, however, he does. A nice Crystal Aegis from Jason. And they're pulling back here a little. They still have 45 seconds on the DK, so you don't need to rush uh, anything. Uh, with Dahaka not here either. And the Reborn Red Knights on the verge of 20. There is a charge and a taunt onto Genji. And Lu Ming was about a half a second late on her combo. And that allowed Genji to get away. If Lu Ming would have thrown out that combo just a second earlier, it would have definitely deleted, uh, deleted the Genji. You know, another thing to consider with Lior on both Dragonshire and um, and Garden of Terror is his Drain of Hope just melts, absolutely melts the vehicle, the Garden of Terror and the Dragon Knight both. Um, you can see that here. They are able to secure this mid fort. Both teams at got 20 right in the middle of all this. Nobody dying, and it looks like both teams will disengage. Dahaka was getting a little split, put pressure, split push pressure in the top lane, and now he is safely issued. So very close game. Both teams have all of their keeps. Both teams have only one fort. Both teams at level 20. 13 kills to 11, so very close in that regard. Both teams now getting their top bruisers. You have to wonder if they're going to meet at the bottom bruiser. So the next big team fight could very well decide this game. Red team was faster on this bottom lane rotation. Dahaka is in top. So if Blue gets this fight, it's going to be a 5 on 4 like they want. On 6 is hot. Uh, split up, Varian split from the rest of his team, and they are definitely retreating. The Haka did burrow in to join his teammates, so if they decide to take this five on five. So the Haka still split from his team, though, you, in kind of a flanking position and running really, really fast due to that level one talent race car build. There's the charge onto the Arthas, he is rooted in place, and we are going. 
cursed bullet just chunks down New York. Ariel taunted tight out of position. That is a good taunt target. However, 405 for the peel. Ancestral healing goes out. Everybody pressing their R buttons. Genji is the first to fall very quickly, followed by Varian and by the Min. So the reborn Red Knights currently on the warpath, and it looks like the rest of Kron 6 will get out alive. A two for one in favor of the Knights right as the shrines pop. If Entomb is up here, Rhaegar might be in trouble, and it is. He is caught. And will he get out? No, he will not. A nice, nice play by Phantom Puppy on the Orc. And Staggered Death Timers late game are absolutely killers. That Rhaegar pick is really brutal. It will almost assuredly secure the Dragon Knight for the Reborn Red Knights. You can see uh, Gul'dan is waiting here to grab it. There's really nobody available to contest it. And uh, I think the move here for... Kron 6 is just stay alive. Don't lose this game. This is a minute 20 Dragon Knight. 21 minutes into the game. Or, or, I'm sorry, level 21. 20 minutes into the game. So it's going to be very strong. You're going to see how hard it hits this fort. That fort's going to be gone on like three or four auto attacks. And there it goes. Rhaegar still not up for Kron 6. So they're out very aggressively. The late game Dragon Knights not only hit fortresses like a truck or the force, but they also hit heroes like a truck. They're really good in team fights. The Hako was isolated out and exploded in that team fight. And this has wind condition written all over for the reborn Red Knight. Varian diving in taunts, but nothing comes of it. The first keep down. And with the Dragon Knight at half health in 45 seconds, they are thinking game as they should be. However, that Dragonite is taking a lot of damage. It's going to go down very soon. Four at 70%. This is going to be really, really close. 40%. 38%. Ario goes down. 25%. And this is going to be game 7%. 4 4%. 4%. 4%. 4%. Oh, if Gul'dan would have stayed, would it make the difference at 4%? I think so. Holy moly. So now what, what if anything, can Kron 6 do um, with the next 30 seconds? Ideally, they want to get a keep. I don't know if they can. Um, if someone gets picked there, they definitely can. Um, if they can get a keep and even out the pressure, that's the way to go. But with your core at 4%, you have to be so careful um, of a back to work. Um, you can't get caught out too far forward and allow the opposition team to uh, go straight for your core. Uh, and, and this this is actually where Kron 6 needs to be. They, so if all five members of the Reborn Red Knights go straight to core, it will probably end the game. So what Kron 6 needs is they need to have the 5-on-5 five five team fights be out on the battlefield. They do not want a fight at their core. So they want to find the Reborn Red Knights and fight them on the battlefield away from their core. They do not want any collateral damage going to the core. I mean, a level 22 team can tear down 4% in just a, a few seconds. I mean, that core will go down really fast. So they, they're showing bottom. If I'm Kron 6, I collapse on bottom. You, you have to get these team fights out away from the core. You do not want them at your core. Uh, Li Ming just bait face checked, and there's the Horrify. It isolates out Li Ming and the Haka. Uh, Taunt goes on to Arthas, Crystal Aegis goes out, and this is the fight that Khan wanted. However, Dahaka, the first to go down, Shield of Hope keeps everybody alive, and Li Ming follows. Jason finally falls. However, two members of Red, three members of Red, this will be game. Varian, the only man left. An excellent, excellent series. This was a really fun game. The series was very entertaining. Uh, these three members can walk to four and end the game now. Well played by both teams. An epic, epic core defense coming out of Kron 6. And there is game three. Well 
well played by both teams. Congratulations to the Reborn Knights Red for their victory 2 to 1 over Cron 6. Now they are 2 and 0 on the Young Cheer League season and Cron 6 falls to 1 and 1. So thank you to both teams for letting me cast your games. I do very much appreciate it. Uh, comments, criticism, constructively, of course. Uh, always appreciate it. And thanks to the very lively chat tonight. I love it when people are in the chat room talking. Um, I did see your calls for the talents on there, guys, but there is a two-minute delay. So keep in mind, if I, if I see it on there and put it up, you're not going to see it for another two minutes. <clears throat> so everybody have a wonderful night. Uh, we will see you back for next week, week three of Chair League Season 1. And congratulations once again to Reborn Nice Reds for the victory this evening. Have a wonderful night. Everybody, take care.